divers down, and flag up. These divers are replacing oxygen meters underwater with new ones, gathering information on oxygen levels at different depths. Underwater, the meters are attached to a buoy anchored at the bottom. And a buoy at the, near the surface and a cable strung out in between, and on it we have three oxygen meters. Today, they're diving about 25 miles southeast of Terrebonne Bay. Heading up to hypoxia zone research is Dr. Nancy Rabelais of Louisiana University's Marine Consortium, or LUMCON. She and her assistants, Laura, Adam, and Kyle, make regular monthly trips out here to check numerous stations, from Terrebonne Bay all the way to the Chafalaya area. Well, we started studying it in 1985. It was obvious that there was some low oxygen out here, but nobody really knew how widespread it was or how persistent it was. So some initial funding from NOAA provided the opportunity to document that. When water contains less than two parts per million of dissolved oxygen, it is termed hypoxic. The Mississippi delivers nutrients, phosphorus and nitrogen, and they stimulate the growth of this, uh, the phytoplankton that make the water so green today. And the more nutrients that are delivered, the more the phytoplankton grow. And that decomposing phytoplankton, when it sinks to the bottom, the bacteria that decompose it use up the oxygen, and that leads to the, the low oxygen on the bottom. The majority of phosphates and nitrogen that arrive in the Gulf are from runoff in the Midwestern states. In fact, about 41% of the country's area drains into the Mississippi River. Last year's hypoxia zone looked like this. In fact, it's been growing throughout the years. Also, the size of the area may be diminished if hurricanes or tropical storms stir up the water and, of course, the oxygen. One of the adverse effects of the lack of oxygen in the water is a drastic depletion of shrimp and bait fish, which in turn hurts the fishing and shrimping industries. Fish like red snapper, red drum, croaker that depend on feeding on the bottom have to move out of the area. The brown shrimp, white shrimp move out of the area so that the only fish that you'll see today will be up in the water column. Hopes are that one day through research, the amount of nitrogen and phosphate can be reduced, thereby reducing the amount of low oxygen levels in these waters, making this area continue to be one of the best shrimping and fishing spots in the entire United States. Reporting from the Gulf of Mexico, I'm Bill Sherman for This Week in Louisiana Agriculture. It's almost as big as mine.